All right, hello, and welcome to my new tutorial series on creating a tile-based game in uh, Unity. Uh, reason, well, I'm not cloning a game this time. I just wanted to do something different because tiles are useful and stuff. It's helpful in building worlds. Uh, you can rig them up to help you do your pathfinding because that'll be useful. Help working out how much space you've got and stuff. And I'll just give you a quick example of a couple of games that I think use tiles. So. On Gimp, I've got screenshots, so SimCity, I don't think like it uses uh it uses tiles to like mark out bits you can zone and build roads on and that to sort of like So say you zoned like this grid bit residential, it'd then go through each of the tiles and work out, alright, uh how many tiles are free, uh and like what kind of how What's the land value and stuff to work out? All right, say we want to build a four by four like high wealth house here, or if down the street it was like a bit shitty, there was crime, poverty, whatever, it build a cheaper, smaller house that you use less tiles. So yeah, and this would then impact like say if you're building houses down the street, you're like say you wanted to build a medium wealth house here, and but because there's lower value houses on the other one side and higher on the other. You just like say, all right, what kind of medium wealth houses can we fit into this space? So good at calculating like that. Oh yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Pokemon blue, the old one. No, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure they use it in the older ones, but definitely like up towards like the Game Boy Advance and maybe even the DS versions of Pokemon used tile based graphics for the world uh to build up the worlds because it's it's a good way to build a world i like it uh i know it doesn't use like pathfinding or anything particularly advanced in the uh actual world bit it was more to do the battling but you know it works and yeah and i think the binding of isaac may use them but yeah because you can see, like the these are the same rocks that are the same size, but and some of them have like variation on them. And yeah, uh, the reason I'm going on about like just three completely different games is to show you how like the you can use them. Uh, basically, uh, there's like a lot of variety you can do, and yeah. So it can be useful for whatever, and if you want to take stuff away from the series, then you can. All right, so the first thing I'm going to program in uh, a series is, or oh, I'm going to show you actually, is just a, a basic sort of tile system. Can I just, you know, in like a, a, the game you're going to want to build or what I'm programming is, we're not going to want like just one type of tile. We're going to want uh, several different types. So we're going to use uh, inheritance to do that. And to show you that, I've built a tile masterclass now this is going to be like the base class for all tiles uh and like basically they're going to inherit it so in this example you just add a little bit here because it'll normally say uh mono behavior if you've just created the script in unity but uh in this case we're important inheriting the tile masterclass and in case you're worried about needing the mono behavior stuff no because the tile masterclass inherits the mono behavior and by default, or by sort of inheritance, the test tile two will also get the mono behavior, whatever's, because it's already in the tile masterclass. So yeah. So one thing we can do is basically we're going to use the tile masterclass to define all like methods we could use for tiles. So say on my, oh, uh, it's just for this example. Just for this example, sorry. We've got an on select method. So basically this is going to be run by the selection manager, which I'll explain in a minute when we click it. And it, it, the difference, one difference but you might notice is it's a virtual void rather than just a void. Now virtual means we can override this class, uh, not class, uh, method, that's one. We can override it. So say in a class inherits it, so say test tile, we've got a public override void. So this is saying, all right, if someone gets the tile masterclass on the object, 
Uh, but it, since it'll, if it has the test tile on, it'll get the test tile because it's sort of a tile masterclass as well. Uh, it will override and it calls on select. It will run this statement rather than the one that was included in the tile mask class because you've had an override. I hope that makes sense. And uh, yeah. So as you can see, uh, objects with a tile master class will run this line. So it'll say tile master class and the position of the game object. Test tile two is just again demonstrating that if we don't override the method, we'll just get this again. And this, if we just have the tile master class on its own without one of the test tiles that inherits from it, that inherits it, then it'll run this as well. But if we do override the method, it will say tile test class. And yeah, so I'll quickly demonstrate that now. So you can say, uh, so this one has just the tile master class. This one has test tile, which is the one that has the, that overrides the on select method. And this one is test tile two, which doesn't override the method. So if we click play, and you want to look at the console for this, just turn off errors. Uh, so let's see, we've got the tile mask class, because that one is the one that just has the super class on it. We click again on the middle tile, and that goes tile test class, because this is the one that has normal, the first test tile script, which overrides it. And if you click on the second one, which has the test tile two, you can see it goes back to the tile master class because it doesn't override the method, but it's not the actual tile superclass, so it just goes to its superclass uh, superclasses uh, version of the on click method. So yeah, on oh, on select, sorry. Uh, yes. So I think there was one more thing I wanted to mention, which was uh, how. You can get all, so say uh, we got like children that inherit from the superclass. I don't know what it'd be called. A child class, maybe? I don't know. But they all uh, inherit from this tile masterclass, as you can see. And one thing that you can do with uh, inheritance is we can get the parent class. So. Or we can get the superclass, sorry. Uh, and if we like, get all objects of that superclass, so basically I've got code that just sets that array, that public ar uh, array, so we can see. Uh, it basically just finds all objects of type, type masterclass, tile masterclass. And if we click play and look at this objects with superclass array, we'll see it's found all three of the. Uh, tiles despite only one of them like despite two of them actually just inheriting rather than being the tile master class and that is something useful you could use if you wanted to like you know find all the tiles and perform an operation on them or something or whatever or say if you were like doing a selecting like you wanted to drag and drop like you know how you can draw a grid over stuff to, uh, or like a square and select everything in that square you could do that for tiles or something so yeah and finally, I want to show you the uh, selection manager, which is basically just a quick script to, uh, well, which we're going to work on because we're going to have to have more types of selection. Basically, this fight, basically, uh, it sets, it's for selecting objects in the scene with the mouse. So we've got a game object currently selected, and the reason it's not public and we have serialized field is just so we can see it in the inspector. So you can see it appears there, but it's not public. And yeah, but this uh, this serialized field uh, objects with superclass is just for demonstrating how you can get like classes that inherit from tile master class just by looking for the tile master class. So that's not going to really matter. Uh, again, that's just for showing you that. Uh, first off, we've got. Uh, Check for left mouse click. So that's the basically it looks for if the player, if the user has pressed the left mouse button down. So that's what zero is. You also got one and two fully uh, right and middle mouse buttons respectively. And I think there are more numbers if you have like one of those fancy mouses with buttons on the side and whatnot. 
Uh, basically, it fires the selection raycast and just debugs that we're looking for a raycast hit. And what we do in the selection raycast is it fire it gets the uh, mouse's position in the world space, so it converts what the screen coordinates the mouse uses, which will be just the width and height of the view monitor, to a world position, and then stores that as a vector two. And then we find we fire a raycast, which is basically just a line that tells you if you've hit something on that line. So in that case, we're firing it on from the mouse position, or in this case, we're not go, do it going in a direction because we just want something that's directly at the mouse. And again, it's zero, so it just finds like, all right, is there an object exactly where this mouse is that can collide with the raycast? And basically, what we do is we try uh, we have a try catch statement for this. If the raycast has hit something, then we get that game object that it hit and assign it to hit object. Which I don't want to do that. Shit. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we just debug the name and set the selected objects up here to whatever was hit. So we have a method to do that. And we have a unselect here. Just to like, all right, we've selected the object. Now, what do we want to do with it? And it'll run that code. And if there wasn't anything, it'll just. Uh, It'll, normally it would throw an error, but thanks to the try and catch, we can just say, all right, debug.log, nothing was selected. And we've also got a couple of getters and setters, so, or one getter and setter. So basically we've got a method to set the selected game object. So it just passes in the object and sets it to the currently selected. And we've got one for getting it, which again, just returns currently selected object and we've got a clear selected, but isn't used that isn't used yet, but we'll probably use it in the future where it just sets it back to null, so there's no object selected. And yeah, that was all I think. So again, I'll just demonstrate you. We got uh, objects we can select. So as you can see, it's on tile example two, tile example three, and just the tile example. So yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah, I think that'll just be it. Next time we're going to be working on how to get tiles in a grid and maybe doing multiple selection and stuff. So I hope you look forward to that. Give us any ideas if you want something to put in, criticisms and whatnot. Hopefully I can try and improve my code to make it a bit more readable and just in generally better. Because I know there were some problems with it before, but whatever. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Go check out my stuff on itch.io. The links will be in the description. And bye.